Today I'm sharing with you my Christian testimony. Jesus saved us 13 years ago when a demon assaulted my family and me in the middle of the night. This is a story I truly believe you don't want to miss and one I am convinced that you need to hear, especially for the day and age we're living in. All that coming up right after this. Hey, 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 what is going on, everyone? Welcome back for another video. My name is Jason, if this is your first time here, and I'm a Christian and a YouTube pastor, and I'm all about helping you see yourself as valued and as worthy and as wanted, even when other people can't or won't see you that way. If that sounds good to you, start right now by subscribing to the channel, ring that little notification bell, and that way you won't miss anything. I've really been sensing and feeling for some time that I need to get this message out because I truly believe the time is short. From all that I'm seeing, all that I'm hearing, all that I'm sensing, from all that I've experienced, and from what God is showing in my dreams, I believe that the gates of hell are planning to attack the church. I believe demons are planning an all-out assault on the church and on Christians. And I want you to be prepared. I don't want anything to happen to you like happened to us, especially if you're not prepared. So I'm just going to share my story with you. I don't know how long this is going to take. Bear with me, hang around with me all the way through the end because I promise you, as we come to a close, I'm gonna share with you a few things that you can do to prepare yourself, heaven forbid, anything happen to you like happened to us. Okay, and one other thing. If at any point in time through the video you like what you're hearing, please give it a thumbs up. That way I know that this is the kind of content that you wanna hear more of. Okay, here we go. So 13 years ago, I was enrolled in seminary full-time at Bethel Theological Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. We were living on campus in seminary student housing. I worked full-time at a church at North Heights Lutheran Church in the Adult Discipleship Department. And it was a marvelous time at work and at school. Things couldn't have been going any better. Anyway, I'll never forget this day. It was a Sunday in September. And, well, the day started off as any day would. We got up to go to church. I had to do work while I was there. But I'll also remember that day that Haley brought with her a friend from school who wanted to know more about Jesus. So we invited this friend along with us. And afterwards, we went out for lunch at Red Robin and we had a great conversation with her and life was going great. We got home and my wife and I did what we would normally do, which would be study all afternoon. Which, when you gotta read hundreds of pages and writing term papers and this and that, you get mentally drained. And typical Sunday for us, and that's what happened. Well, the afternoon drew to a close, mentally exhausted, and the evening dawned. And eventually it was time for the girls to go to bed, and Grace being the youngest, she would go to bed first. Sometimes Emma right with her. And I'll never forget this, she was playing, Grace was playing with an imaginary friend. And honestly, I didn't think anything of it. I played with an imaginary friend when I was a little boy too. A lot of kids do. I just didn't think anything of it. But it was time for Grace to go to bed. So I said, Grace, can you tell your imaginary friend to, to go home? It's time for you to go to bed. And I'll never forget this. She said, no. Now, kids say no all the time. But you have to understand and know my daughter, Grace. She is as quiet as a mouse. Very compliant, very amiable. And this was really out of character for her. Other than kind of being a sneaky Pete and the one you had to watch out for because she was so quiet, you never knew what she was getting into or up to. The way she adamantly stated no was completely out of character for her. And so I just kind of sat back and I said, Grace, tell your imaginary friend that it's time to go home. You need to go to bed. And again, she said, no. Now I'm getting a little concerned. And I said to her, Grace, what's the name of your friend? And she said, nothing. Not like she didn't say anything, but the name of the imaginary friend was nothing. And now I'm feeling really uneasy in my spirit, but I didn't know what to do with it. Well, in steps Haley, the oldest sister. And she says, come on, Grace, let's go to bed. And so she grabs Grace by the hand and out of the other hand, pretends to grab nothing's hand and walks them back to the bedroom and tucks Grace into bed. And a little bit later, our middle daughter, Emma, goes to bed too. And all was quiet for about a half an hour to an hour. And then at 10.30 at night, Emma woke up screaming bloody murder. The monsters are trying to get me. The monsters are trying to get me. And 
we calmed her, we reassured her that everything was fine, that there were no monsters, da 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 da. <gasps> oh, if we only knew. She went back to sleep. Within a half an hour, she woke up screaming again, bloody murder. Like it was more intense. The monsters are trying to get me. They're trying to get me. They're in the room screaming bloody murder. And now I am really worried. And then I hear loudly in my spirit, not my own voice. I hear, Jason, you need to cleanse this house. And I knew it wasn't for me. This is not any type of thing that I would have ever said. But I didn't know what to do with that. My only response was, okay, God, I'll do it in the morning. Kid you not, that's what I said, and I verbally said it out loud. Okay, God, I'll do it in the morning. Yeah. We go to bed. Sometime after midnight. And I can't explain this other than how I'm going to. I was sleeping. I mean, I was out, y'all. And my wife passed out. And, and this is where the story gets really intense. I was dreaming, but it felt like I was awake. Like I could see everything in the room, even though I know I was asleep. And out of nowhere, this thing, this creature, this demon pops up. And the only way I can describe this thing is like scarier than anything that you've ever seen in any horror movie. I mean, hideous, ugly, gnarly. And it wasn't huge like you would think, but now it's small and a short, stocky torso but these really long legs and arms, like super duper long, disproportionately long, and these long hands with these sharp claws, and its face, its eyes were huge and blacker than blacker than black, and its teeth were sharp like razors, like rows of razors, and it's completely translucent. I couldn't explain it other than to say, like you could kind of see through it, like it was gelatinous, it was gross, it was ugly, it was hideous, and it was mean, and it was nasty. And it got on top of me, and with two arms and one leg, it wrapped itself around me. Like, I don't, did you ever see that movie, The Poltergeist, that, that, that clown that was under the bed? How long, it, it was gross, and but ugly, or more hideous, and it's trying to, it's on me, it's sitting on my chest, and it's trying to get in me. It's like trying to squeeze itself into me. And its other hand was on my mouth. I, it was so firmly pressed. I could not, I could barely breathe, and I certainly couldn't utter a word. And I am afraid, like scared, you know what. And I don't know what to do. The only thing I can think of is Jesus. Jesus' name popped in my head, and I start thinking in my brain, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm like, in my mind, in my brain, I'm saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. And finally, somehow, I get enough strength where I could say it with my mouth. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. And it got a little weaker. And I said it again, and it got a little weaker. And I said it again, and it got a little weaker. And now I'm screaming, and I'm shouting, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. And I take my hands like right here on my chest and I physically throw the thing up against the closet and I said in the name of Jesus Christ I rebuke you you must leave this house now in the name of Jesus Christ and boom it goes gets out of the house at this point in time my wife is awake she's sitting up in the bed scared you know what I'm freaking out and I'm like holy crap I gotta fix my hat <laughs> and I and I hear from God one more time, cleanse this house. And then I hear, go to the kitchen sink, rinse yourself with water and anoint yourself with oil. I, I didn't know what to do other than to do what I was told. So I, I went to the kitchen and I rinsed myself with water, patted myself off and dumped some oil on my forehead. And then in a cup, I took some oil in, olive oil and I put it in a cup and I anointed my wife and my three daughters on their forehead with the sign of the cross and and then every piece of furniture, every windowsill, every wall, every door frame, everything in the house, everything. I put the sign of the cross and I said something to the effect of from the north to the east to the south to the west. I protect this house in the name of Jesus Christ, evil, you have no dominion. I don't remember the exact words I used. It was something like that. Again, I, I didn't know what I was doing, but it freaked me out. The next night was Monday. 
I had class. And I was with the same group of people for five years, you guys. We really became really tight. We're all really good friends to this day. And we're sitting in class and I pulled him aside. I said, guys, you have no idea. I'm gonna tell you something that happened last night. I said, I don't know if you're gonna believe me, but I gotta tell you this story. And as I started to tell the story, one classmate goes, yep. I've seen demons in our apartment too. I've seen the beady red eyes sitting in the corner. This whole time I thought that because Bethel was a seminary and because we were sitting on, on a, a Christian university that it was somehow hallowed ground, but no, no. Demons are real, y'all, and they want to attack. They want to destroy. I mean, we read in Scripture from the Apostle Peter, 1 Peter, where he says, the devil, your enemy, is like a roaring lion. He's out on the prowl and he seeks to destroy, to kill, to steal, to maim. The devil's out to get you. He's out to get me. And he's got legions of demons. And we read about that in the Gospels where Jesus was constantly casting out demons. I'm going to be honest, guys. For the longest time, I would read the Gospels and I was, you know, seeing these stories and I was thinking, yeah, maybe these people were just epileptic. Maybe they just were having seizures or something like this, thinking maybe these were just fanciful stories. I mean, I believed in Jesus. I believe in heaven. I believe that there is a hell. But until hell literally assaults you, it seems all too unreal. But I'm telling you, it's real. I'm telling you, demons are real. I mean, angels, demons, they're real. I mean, the scripture, the writer of Hebrews talks about, be mindful, there's times when you're going to entertain angels and you're not even going to know about it. And we read about all these times when Jesus is casting out demons and how others are trying to cast out demons, but they can't or the demons don't recognize their authority because they're not Jesus. They're like, yeah, Jesus we know, but we don't know you. But they know Jesus and they're deathly afraid of Jesus. And so here's what you do if, one, you need to prepare. You just, you need to prepare your life and you do that by reading scripture. Know who God is and know that if you're a Christian that Jesus Christ has saved you and know that if you are saved that the Holy Spirit lives within you, that the Spirit of Jesus Christ lives within you and he can and will through his name overpower anything out of hell and strengthen you and preserve you and protect you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You need to know that. Now, why would a demon ever try to attack a Christian? Why did he try to attack us? If a demon tries to attack you, it's because God has something that he wants for you to do. You're going to make an impact in this world. I mean, you're called to do that anyway. But hell knows that too. And hell wants nothing more than to disrupt the message and the mission that God has for you on this earth. And so you need to be prepared for that. You need to prepare your body. You need to prepare your mind. You need to prepare your spirit. And you do that by reading scripture. You do that by praying and knowing that, well, you put on the full armor of God. As Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus in chapter 6, we read about that, where Paul says, put on the full armor of God. And you need to do that by reading scripture, by taking up arms, by putting up the shield, by putting on the full armor of God. You can withstand the fiery arrows of the evil one. And to know that the devil is out prowling. He wants to get you. He wants to attack you. He can't have you eternally, but if he can make your life miserable and stop you from doing the mission that God has called you to do, then maybe he thinks he's winning. I don't know. All I do know is that things are ramping up. Attacks are happening more and more and more. I'm kind of reluctant to share this, but I'm going to anyway. My youngest daughter, who, while she wasn't physically attacked that night, it was just Emma and me, my middle daughter and me. She's now feeling the attacks from a very close friend of hers who's not a Christian, who's pretty much an atheist, who's been full out assaulting her and her faith, telling her she's a loser for believing in Jesus Christ. I mean, where do you think these attacks come from? They, they come from down there. They come from hell. They come from the enemy and they're trying to destroy her. They're trying to distract her. They're trying to weaken her. And the only thing it's doing is resolving her more and more in her faith and making her stronger in her faith. But that's because she's in the word of God and she's studying the word of God and she's playing Christian music. She's putting on the full armor of God. She's putting up that shield. She's preparing her mind, her spirit, her soul for what she needs to do to enter into this world as an adult, knowing darn well that evil is out there and it's out to get her. 
And you need to do the same thing. We all do. Folks, time is getting really, really short. And I really believe that the gates of hell are ready to storm this church, that demons are all out going to try to assault us as Christians. And I don't want you to be caught off guard. I don't want anything to happen to you like happened to us. And so protect yourself, guard yourself, get ready now. Do what you can. <laughs> I'm getting shivers. I'm getting Holy Ghost goosebumps and that's a good thing. That's a good sign from God. It tells me that I'm putting out the right word that you need to hear. If this message has been good for you, give it a thumbs up, please. Share this video as well. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, ring that little notification bell, and that way you won't miss anything when I post brand new content. And one more thing, if you have any prayer requests, put them down in the comments section below. Let me know how I can pray for you. And until I get to talk with you again, I pray that you are blessed. Goodbye for now.